Hi everyone, today's tutorial is going to cover basic still water strategies for mountain lakes. So why fish still waters? Still waters are a great alternative when the moving waters start to get crowded during summer. You'll oftentimes find you have a lot of these high mountain lakes to yourself. When we're having a tough water year like we are this year, and water temps and levels are starting to become kind of a concern, you can head up to these high mountain lakes and find some less stressed out fish and more willing fish, and the fishing up there is great. It's also a nice change of pace from moving waters. They present a different type of challenge with different presentations and different water types that lead to some very fun fishing. Before we dive in, I also just wanted to preface this tutorial by saying I'm not an expert still water fisherman. This tutorial is not going to cover every single technique you can use up there. It's just going to cover a few basic strategies that have consistently worked well for me and I know will help you get into a few fish. So starting off with gear, the following rigs and techniques are suitable for your all-purpose trout gear. Like something like a 9 foot 5 weight rod or similar with floating line. A 10 to 12 foot tapered leader with 4 to 6x tippet. Your gear should just be capable of shooting a enough line from the bank or turning over an indicator rig or streamer in tight casting areas with the roll cast. You just want your gear to have enough punch to be able to get some line out to those deeper drop offs and deeper areas of a lake. All the rigs I'm going to talk about are capable of being fished on that basic setup. Moving on to trout food. There are six types of forage that can be dependably found in and around our mountain still waters. They are coronamids, also known as lake midges, mayflies like calabatis, or if you're lucky to have them, hexagenia. There's damselflies, there's terrestrials such as ants, hoppers, beetles, and other land-based insects that get blown into the water by the wind. There's also bait fish and, of course, leeches. If I don't know what specifically in a still water, I'll try and make my fly choice based on these assumptions. Unless I have other information about the water, I'll generally start with a fly that imitates at least something from these six groups. Regarding trout activity and their feeding habits, trout tend to more actively feed on the surface and up in the water column during low light hours in the mornings and evenings. They tend to move deeper during the bright time of day and feed subsurface. But this is definitely just a generalization with many exceptions and variables that may alter their behavior. Temperature, time of year, weather, and Hatches all may encourage surface feeding throughout the day. It's good to just look around and look out for clues that might give you an indication on what their current feeding behavior is and adjust your strategy based on what you see. If they want to hit dries at noon, throw dries. If you don't see any Surface activity when you get there early in the morning, then you may have to go subsurface. The first technique to cover is just fishing a dry fly on your basic dry fly rig. You can target rising fish and try to lead the cruisers, or you can blind cast hoping for an opportunistic trout eat. Mornings, evenings, and cloudy days tend to have more actively feeding fish. But there definitely are days where they'll eat all day on top. This is especially true if there's a good hatch going on. I like to dead drift my dries and sometimes I'll add a little twitch just to grab their attention if it's been soaking for a while. Some of my favorite dries to throw are bionic ants, atoms, corn fed midges, bob hoppers, and other small foam attractors like chubbies. Here are a few clips of me throwing dries up in the Uintas.
Got one. That's a better fish. Nice tiger. Another cut. Nice. The second technique for still waters is to utilize the same indicator rig you would use for moving waters. It's generally a weighted nymph or two underneath an indicator. You can adjust the length of line from the indicator to the flies to fish different depths and target subsurface feeders throughout the water column. If you're looking for your indicator to do anything unnatural or go under completely and set when you see something like that. It works well dead drifted or on a slow steady retrieve like with a hand twist technique. Windy conditions are great for this since the ripples and waves will help jig the fly beneath the surface. Some of my favorite flies are lantern damsels, balanced leeches or damsels, chronomid imitators like silver lancers or TF class images. Any attractor nymph will work under an indicator though. Here's a few fish catches on a Hyuinta lake using an indicator rig. Haven't had anything hit the streamer for a while, so try something subsurface. Got a damsel fly and a chronomid. Just gonna let it dangle. Yep, there we go. On the indicator rig. Wonder what it took. It's a pretty decent tiger. Oh, I think it took the coronamid. No, it took the damsel. The lancer damsel. Oh, get in the net. There we go. That's a chunky tiger. Not long, but chunky. like a pretty good one. Maybe. Oh yeah. It's a brook. No, it's a tiger. Let's find that. It's a pretty nice tiger, though. I can. Not 
already. Into the net. That's a nice tiger. The third basic technique is to throw small streamers on a standard long leader. Some days trout prefer them more than others, but you can usually move a few fish at least when you're fishing them in these high mountain lakes. You can count the streamers down to almost any depth, and it's important to vary your retrieve until you find the cadence that the trout like best. Sometimes that's slow poles or quick short strips. Sometimes it's a strip and pause. You just got to play around with it until you find something they're willing to commit to. Some of my favorite flies are standard woolly buggers. My jig Sculpzilla is awesome for this because it's weighted heavily so it has a pretty quick sink rate. It also swims well when stripped back from shore. There are other leech and bait fish imitators too that work great. So here's a few different scenarios where I fished streamers and was able to move a few. There we go. Pretty much on the fall. Ooh. That's some head shakes. Decent cut too. There we go. Oh, that's a big tiger. Nice. Yeah.
Well, that's a nice one. I am recording at least. Anyways, there's three rigs you can use to go out and target trout in our high mountain still waters. Again, it's a great way to escape the heat and the crowds and find some more willing fish. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I hope it encourages you to go out and try some of these techniques out. They're a fun way to fish. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like it down below. And if you've haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope you consider subscribing. It really helps me out and encourages me to do more of these videos. Anyways, thanks for watching.